But what happens is the effects are accumulative. The body uses 2.5 liters, which is about nine cups of water a day, according to the Mayo Clinic. Now, folks, the Mayo Clinic is mainline and very, very conservative. That is just what you need, folks, to stay alive. Will you please repeat with me? Nine cups just keeps me alive. Nine cups just keeps me alive. So when you hear these things that say eight glasses of water, nine cups of water, whatever, it isn't even enough, according to the Mayo Clinic, to keep your bodily me metabolism and bodily processes hydrated in the least amount. More causes of cellular dehydration, if you have any kind of work. Now, strenuous activities can be mental or it can be stress. How many of you have stressful jobs? Uh-huh, most people do or have stress somewhere in their life. How, maybe I should have said, how many of you have stressful kids or grandkids? Maybe that's what your trigger is to more hands. Okay, so if you eat foods that are little in fruits and vegetables, they're dried foods, they take a lot of water to digest. And acid, it's like you didn't drink at all because acid consumption of water, and how many of us have been diligent about getting purified water? How many of you out there have been really diligent about making sure you don't drink tap water and you drink bottled? Oh, I was adamant, you know, we have our own in our house, we have distilled, we have everywhere I go, we have purified water. It's acid water, you might as well drink nothing. And digestion of, uh, in the digestion process, the fluids are not being replaced. First is the last thing and you know, I can remember saying to clients, you need to drink more water, and they would say to me, but I'm not thirsty. And I really didn't have a good comeback other than, you need to drink more water. But I sure do now, and you will too. Dehydration occurs when there's more water leaving the body than is being taken in. And the body is dynamic, it's moving all the time and it's always changing and this is especially true with the water levels in the body. How many of you notice now that your body craves water? I've noticed since I've gotten on microclustered water, I can tell my body is like listening now, it's like it's woken up all the receptors and it, it like says, I need more water. And before, I never was thirsty, and I would forget to drink. So your water uh, routinely needs to be replaced. So we lose it in all of these examples, which we're going to now show you. How many of you are not aging? Oh, we got some. Well, I tell you, after I hit about 45, I started to feel it. And after I hit 50, I started to feel it more. And then the next decade, I felt it, felt it more. And I am so thankful to God that he brought into my life and into the United States, because literally this was not available to us many, many years ago, that now I have a tool before I'm 100 to start really challenging my aging process. And you see, aging causes a decreased thirst. It just goes away. And you see many, many um, older people who say, I'm drinking? And you look, my folks are 93 and 90, they live in a retirement home. Nobody drinks water there. It's like water, water purifiers. It's like foreign. And they're all suffering too. They're not in very good health. Another thing that we sometimes don't want to hear don't want to see is that alcohol causes dehydration. Well, if you're going to drink, then at least be aware you need to drink a whole lot more of the right kind of water to deal with that dehydration it causes. Now, there are special circumstances that cause dehydration, and one of them is burns. And if you know anybody that has lots of burns or little burns, they're going to need a lot more water in their body. Here's another one of those American um, don't tell me don't talk to me about it, I'm going to keep my cup of coffee. You know, when I was very, very ill in my 20s, this is what led me into nutrition and natural health, I had to quit coffee because it was um, actually pushing my energy down. And I thank God it did because I realized then what it was not going to help build up my health. 
And a lot of people just haven't gotten that yet. They haven't figured out that it's reducing your melatonin in your brain. That's very, very important for good sound sleep. It's decreasing your memory enzymes. I want to be full of a good memory on into my 90s and 100s. It can cause DNA damage. It affects your overall brain function. How many students do you know? And I, when I went to college and grad school, everybody was drinking coffee to what? Think, study, stay awake through the night. I couldn't handle it. it. Thank God at that time I was sick enough that even coffee wasn't helping me. But it, it actually depletes their brain functioning. And when people crave coffee, it's a craving for water that their body needs. 10 ounces of coffee removes 12 ounces of water from the body. Dehydration is caused by diarrhea. Diets cause dehydration when you see people or yourself or whoever when they eat a lot of snacky foods, processed foods, refined grains, chemicals, high in chemicals, preservatives. Sugar is a big one. It steals the water from you and people don't think like that. Now, of course, salty foods cause you to crave and maybe to thirst water, but what do people quench that thirst with or try to quench it with? Sodas or iced tea or something that further causes dehydration. Exercise uses up water. We know that this doesn't include just the physical exercise, but it includes the mental as well. You're going to need way more than the 2.5 liters to fill up that body's dehydration just from some of these things. Fever, we know that edema means dehydration. I've told this to people for years, and you know what? They just, it's so hard for our brains to get it. Well, how can that be a lack of water when I got too much water? Well, it's because the inside of the cell is mostly salt and your potassium sodium pumps aren't working right. And uh, the body pulls the water from other parts to assist that area and you get dehydration. And if you drink enough water, you must drink it until your urine is clear. Now, the only exception to that is, of course, if you just took a B-complex with the riboflavin in it and that will make the urine very yellow. Water is the best natural diuretic, and if people would just use a lot more of that, they would find their swelling and things would be much more improved. High altitude causes dehydration. Again, I'm going to tell you a little story about myself. It's kind of, um, when I look at it now, it makes me feel rather stupid and ignorant, but I went to Ecuador a few years ago, and um, I got very sick in Quito, and it was, I thought, What's the matter? I'm not sick. I don't want to get the flu. I felt horrible. And, you know, we had a bottled water here, bottled water there, bottled acid water. <laughs> and, I mean, I was sick. And it, it, was, it was a health trip. There were a lot of other people there who were into health, and nobody knew to drink water. In fact, you know what they gave me? They gave me cacao, which is chocolate, which has caffeine, which further dehydrates you. I didn't know any better. I was so desperate, so I took it. But now, if I go back there or any high elevation, I'm going to know you drink a lot of the right kind of water and really hydrate yourself well. Another reason, we all know this one, we've all said it, we've all known it, is when you're sick, you get dehydrated. And why? Because you've got to flush those toxins. And one of the reasons why we get sick is because we haven't flushed the toxins and also haven't flushed them with the right kind of water. Chronically ill people have to have the right kind of water because if you don't, they just get stuck there and then they cause all kinds of illness. This is a huge area with medications causing dehydration. If you will look in the uh, medicine uh, on the internet or anywhere where they talk about the side effects,